a lot of people are leaving Florida right now. And in this video, we're gonna tell you the main reasons people are leaving and we're getting started right now. At the end of the video, we're going to give you something that will help you decide if Florida is great for you. And we're gonna give you something that maybe if you made the move already and you're not quite sure if it's right for you, it'll help you kind of decide that. One of the reasons why people are moving out is because of the bugs and wildlife. Definitely a different state than pretty much any other state yes. I've ever been to as far as that goes. Yes, and I don't feel like bugs are as bad. I mean, we do have different kinds of bugs, but I, I don't feel like they're as bad. Unless you're out in the wild, like hiking or camping or things like that, then they probably would be pretty bad. But I don't like bugs, so we don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, not as much, yeah. And I mean, like she said, if you're in more of a city, it's a little bit less of an issue. The big three that stand out in my mind as being like, more of them and more of a problem here than other states we've been to. Number one, the love bugs during love bug yes. season. They're like these little two bugs that they're literally making love in the sky, just hovering and they just sit there. They don't move around, they're just like in space. And if you walk into them, if you drive into them, and Squash. they'll stay in your car. Yeah. During, we've sent, seen some years where they're just terrible. Like they're everywhere. Like you can't walk without hitting 10 of them. So that's very like, it's not every year and it's a very short period of time. It's maybe a couple of weeks. And, and they're not as bad like in the city yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't really get them last year, the year before. And when we do get it, again, it's like a one to two week thing. Roaches, there's definitely more of those. Palmetto bugs, whatever you want to call the different variations. But there's definitely more of those down here. But as long as you're getting pest control, they're not really an issue. Ants for sure. There's really nothing you could do to stop. The soil is basically all sand here, so there's ants everywhere. You're not gonna completely eliminate them, but if you're, again, using pest control, you can keep them out of the house. And then the no see -ums. I don't really remember seeing as many of those up north. We have more like gnats, but not ones that would actually bite you. They're like these little small bugs that'll bite you. And you don't realize they're biting you until like it's too late and you're covered in little bumps because of them. Yeah, and less, I would say, at least compared to where we came from, Wisconsin, less mosquitoes, I think, here. And then we also in Wisconsin had these things called deer flies that were way worse. The other thing to note is the wildlife, of course. So one thing, I, I do all the yard maintenance and things like that, I'll notice is we have like these little holes in the ground occasionally. And there's a variety of critters that could be causing that. Could be armadillo, turtles, the, the, yeah, the, the racer snakes are on. I don't know if they're actually digging. So like we just have different, a lot more wildlife in general, lots of tropical birds. Like there's a upside too. There's some beautiful birds, but some people aren't just used to having as many of those different types of critters around. One's digging by your house and stuff. So it's something that you have to get used to. And also with the wildlife too, keep in mind that if you live by a pond, which this is very common in Florida because basically retention ponds, it's when it rains, all the water technically just like goes in there and stays in there and that way you don't have to worry about your house flooding or the streets flooding as much. If there is a body of water, there is probably going to be a gator or two. <laughs> yeah, sometimes two, yeah. If during mating season, it's not very uncommon to see two of them in the same pond. So if you are maybe a little bit afraid, I'm, I'm not saying that we're not afraid, but we are careful. Just be careful of where you end up leaving because yes, if, if you have a pond behind your house, there is probably going to be a gator there. Maybe not all the time, but most likely than not, it'll be there. Yeah, and it would not ever, again, like stop me from moving somewhere that was by a retention pond. For you, that might be different, but just to give you some context, usually the gator is gonna stay in the water. At worst, you might see them walking around in mating season, but we have never seen a gator walking around to this point yet. Mm -hmm. We've been in Florida for three, three and a half years. years. Yeah. You will maybe occasionally see them laying on the bank when it's colder out, when they're sunning themselves to warm themselves up, but they really won't do anything for the most part. They won't approach you. And usually if they hear you approaching them, they'll just go back in the water. Yeah, they get kind of scared of us, so. <laughs> Something to think about, but if you do have small pets and kids, you do want to be careful. Yes. The next reason a lot of people move Florida, and here's a quick solution for you, come visit in the summer because yes. the heat and humidity is going to be a lot more than you're probably expecting. Me, I love it. I just soak it in. I don't mind sweating. I'm weird that way. But most people that aren't used to the constant daily heat and humidity, the daily rain showers in the summer, it's a lot. Yes, and you do want to come visit in the summer just to experience it for yourself because 
your skin and your hair is going to feel so much different and the water here too it's like a little bit harsher on your skin and you do want to you know like experience it for yourself because your hair and your skin will get dry not my hair <laughs> and also with the humidity too your hair will like at least from my experience my hair just gets all puffy and all crazy and it's harder to keep it under control <laughs> So it's something that you do have to learn, like I, I'm still learning how to take care of my hair, but it is you know, a process that you do have to go through and experience it for yourself because everyone's type of hair is different. One other thing to note, just to give you a little more detail, summer, at least where we live on Venice, we're a little closer to the coast, it's going to be just about 90, maybe a little above or below that every single day. You're usually going to get a shower in, in usually the late afternoon or evening. And sometimes a really heavy torrential downpour, usually those rain showers will last anywhere from 10 minutes. And sometimes there's like no rain in the forecast and it just starts raining. And it's really sunny. And then, yeah, yeah and then like if the forecast will literally say, no, it's no rain. sunny right now. Or vice versa, it'll say it's raining and it's not. But anywhere from 10 minutes to maybe an hour, sometimes you'll get, you know, ones that last longer if there's a tropical storm, hurricane. That's another reason people kind of move. We can talk about that more in a little bit, but heat and humidity is gonna be every single day. When we lived in Orlando, the temperatures did fluctuate a little more in the summer, but it went from like basically hot or hotter. And a few things to consider too, is that if it's that hot outside, you can either stay home, you know, we have air conditioning in our houses, in our cars. Restaurants, stores. Res yes, <laughs> like which is like literally a lot of times it's just like super cold inside. But also we have pools. We're on the Gulf Coast, so we have the beach to go to if it's really hot. Or even if you're inland too, like you can just take a day trip to your closest beach and you know, you don't have to be outside experiencing that heat. You can just either go to the pool or go to a beach and you'll be fine. The next reason why people move out of Florida are hurricanes and storm surge. I remember our first year in Florida, we were in Orlando, which when we moved to Florida, we moved to Orlando because it's, you know, in the middle of the state, we're more inland. So we're not going to have to deal with hurricanes or a lot of storm surge or anything Easy. like that. Easy breezy. The, the, the hurricane would be literally a breeze. Yes. Li live breezy <laughs> merch in the description. <laughs> but it so happened that we actually got a hurricane that year. Or I think not quite. It almost. But it almost hit. Yes. What was it? I don't even remember what it was called. Dorian, yes. Hurricane, hurricane Dorian. Dorian. That's what it was. Yeah. And we didn't know any better. The only time I experienced a hurricane, it's when I was like, five, six years old in Honduras. And I like the water got up to like half of our wall. So just imagine a house and half of that, it's like covered in water and mud. So I was freaking out a little bit because I'm like, okay, like did we make a mistake moving to Florida? Like I don't want to deal with all those issues again. We moved to Orlando because it was going to be safer, but it's not. We were freaking out <laughs> a little bit. And well, yeah, and we went to the grocery store. We were stocking up on things that would not need to be refrigerated. We couldn't find anything. We couldn't find water. Getting gas. Yes. So it was quite an experience. <laughs> and for a lot of people, I could see their first time in Florida, that experience being enough to be like, I'm done. Or even worse, God forbid, you have to experience an actual hurricane yes. like really hitting and hitting hard, because it does happen. Mm -hmm. So it's just something you have to be aware of, something to think about. It's a risk that you're gonna have to be willing to take or not take. And the Gulf Coast where we live seems to not really get hit as much. The Tampa or the Venice and Sarasota area for whatever reason. Orlando and more inland, you probably have a little less to worry about, but you know, it does happen. And, and one thing to think about is when those hurricanes hit, sometimes there's also like tornadoes or tropical storms. Yeah, I was gonna mention that. And also another thing to keep in mind too is because of the rain and the wind and um, not only tornadoes forming, but also the storm surge and the flooding that happens because of that. A lot of streets do get flooded and even if your house is technically out of the flood zone because you're um, raised up a little bit, the street might flood and getting in and out of your house might be a little bit more difficult because of that. Yeah, so something you have to think about we haven't really experienced it to the point where it's been an issue like where it kept us from being able to go places damaging our house whatsoever at this point again we've been here three and a half years lived in orlando about a year and a half and then in the venice area for about two years now and one other thing to note is we have heard from some people that have lived here for like literally like grew up here and are like 30 40 years old that they basically put up their hurricane shutters like once 
ever. Yes. So something to think about. Yeah, most locals don't even, like, they don't even know when a hurricane is going through. <laughs> yeah, literally people name, like, drinks or there's a restaurant yeah. in our, just outside our city that's named after Hurricane Irma. So that's kind of the culture here, I guess. Speaking of culture, <laughs> that brings us to the next reason why people are moving out of Florida. Culture and the way of life here, it's a much more slower pace. So some people don't get used to that. It's way too relaxed, like even companies and contractors are just, I don't wanna say horrible, but they're pretty bad. Some of them. You gotta find the good ones, yes. or the, the good communicating ones. Yes, because they'll literally tell you that they'll come to your house and give you a quote or schedule the appointment. You're sitting around waiting for them, they don't show up. And sometimes they'll ghost you like completely and sometimes they'll like reach out back and say, you know, like, oh, I can come this next day and reschedule the appointment and still don't show up. Yeah, and overall, we haven't really experienced too much of people like actually scheduling an appointment to like do the job and not come. It's more on the quotes it's on the quote, and yeah. that side of things where they won't show up or maybe you don't know if or when they're gonna, or when I should say they're gonna show up. But I have heard stories of people though that they, the contractors will start the job and not like finish it right away or like they'll take their time to finish or they'll say, we'll be there at 11 a.m. and don't show up till like 2 p.m. to start working and then from 2 p.m. until like work until like 9 or 10 p.m. or midnight or whatever the case might be like that I feel like especially if you have to work the next morning like that that's just not professional at all yeah and one other quick story from like when we were in the Orlando area I have a basketball skills training business so I was trying to find a gym to rent and I just couldn't even get a phone call or an email back from anyone some people would maybe send one email back or I'd get on the phone with them and then they would ghost me I literally left voicemails for people like, I want to give you money. Do you not want my money? And so they didn't. They just apparently did it. So the money. things like that are just a little bit different. And then also on the culture side of things, you, you want to keep in mind what city you're moving to. Some cities are going to be very multicultural, like Miami, Orlando, Tampa. But then other ones are going to be predominantly small town, mostly white, less diversity and obviously the food options and things like that usually comes along with that. So it's something to think about. Some are gonna be more kind of Southern and some are gonna be more of like this tropical paradise. Everyone comes and visits or like Orlando, like literally people are coming to Disney from all over the world. Yes. So there's different culture on that side of things too, which could be a pro or a con, depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. You just wanna make sure you know what you're looking for. Like for us, when we first moved down, we weren't sure. We thought we wanted a big city, but that's not the case. Like we quickly realized that that's not what we wanted. So you just have to make kind of like a pros and cons of the big city versus a small town and then go from there. Yeah, there's definitely that culture of a fast paced city and a culture of a slow paced city where we're in right now Venice versus when we lived in Orlando, that was more fast paced. Actually in the link in the description, we'll have the top 10 cities in Florida. And there's kind of a variety that we put on that list of our top 10 cities. Some are faster, some are slower. So no matter what you're looking for, you can find the right fit. The next reason is because of traffic and congestion. And I've heard like so many stories uh, from people, you know, locals saying how it's so much worse right now, like within the last year or two, which a lot of people have moved to Florida within the last two years. So people say, you know, like th this is just not sustainable. We can't keep having all these people moving to Florida because now there is a housing shortage, which it is across the country. And then the traffic is just so bad and we don't have the infrastructure for that. Outside of like, I'd say Orlando, pretty busy most of the year. Miami, pretty busy most of the year. Tampa, pretty busy most of the year. Even those get busier mm -hmm. in the winter. But all the other cities like Venice, where we live, Sarasota, super light, easy yes. breezy in the summer. You can get where you're going pretty quick. But then come winter time, the people come, the snowbirds come, the vacationers come, the spring breakers come, and it's just packed everywhere on the roads, especially in the main roads, the side roads, not so bad. And then also bleeds into like finding parking spots and parking lots. It's in the stores, there's a lot more people, so it's routed in there. A lot more people at the beach. Yeah, trying to get a place or a seat at a restaurant. Yeah. So all those things are also factors that come from all the people coming down. And we'll have to update you on that just because like I said, we had a lot of people moving into town, so we're gonna see a difference. I feel this summer we're going to see, is it busier, is it not, is it the same? So maybe we'll make a video about that. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of funny because all the people moving 
in is also the reason for people moving oh up God, because they're causing yes. congestion and whatnot. So something to think about, something you have to be aware of. And again, finding the right city might be a solution for that. I would say like some of the smaller towns like Venice overall are gonna be a little bit better or maybe something a little more inland outside of Orlando. Mm -hmm. You know, some of those smaller cities are typically gonna be a little bit lighter. Another reason a lot of people are moving out of Florida is there ain't no jobs. Well, there is, but it just depends on the city. Again, Orlando, Miami, Tampa, Fort Myers, pretty good for employment opportunities that aren't just service related but there's a lot of jobs outside of that that are mainly gonna be restaurants, tourism, things like that. Yeah, service related or maybe like hospitals, healthcare related jobs. And also a lot of people that moved here say a year and a half, two years ago, they were working from home and now they're getting called back to go back into the office. So maybe now they have to go back, you know, to their state and work from the office. A lot of people are maybe, you know, trying to find different remote work jobs, but yes, a lot of people are leaving Florida because they now have to go to the office. Yeah, and there's just some people that maybe just can't find a job that they want to work, that that's maybe going to pay them enough or in an industry that they're, you know, familiar with. So those are all factors, or maybe it's just not paying them enough to pay their bills. Yes. You know, that's another thing to consider, which I guess comes to the next reason some people are leaving Florida. Yes, the rising cost of living is a big reason why people are leaving Florida, because we don't have jobs that pay enough for people to be able to afford housing. So, certain cities, yeah. In certain cities, yeah. yes. Especially the bigger cities, I would say, or even the cities or small towns on the Gulf or close to a beach. Those are obviously going to be a little more expensive because you have the beach. Yeah, so what, what ends up happening is some people think they just need to get out of Florida, whereas you could maybe have other options. Example, we live in Venice. Prices have really gone up here. They've gone up everywhere, really, but you could move a little more inland in Northport. Still could be able to drive to Venice very quickly or maybe a little south in Inglewood which is still a beach town yes. a little bit more affordable so you might have to think about something like that it's not necessarily that Florida isn't a fit for you or that you can't afford it it just means you might need to move to a different city which sucks that you would have to do it but that's kind of the way things are going with all the people moving in so we want to give you two solutions because we gave you all the problems or all the reasons why people are leaving one is to first before making the move come and visit the area come and explore Florida see if it's the right fit for you and don't just do like touristy things like try to be a local yeah very important to, you know, I would say spend at least three four days going to do day-to-day -day things also one thing to consider is it's gonna be kind of a matter of finding the right city too sometimes like we thought maybe Florida wasn't for us because we were in Orlando and it just wasn't quite a fit because of the traffic we moved to Venice and now we're so glad we're here I don't think we'll ever move out of Venice it's just not always a matter of Florida is or isn't for you it's maybe the right part of Florida and visiting in person can help you also discover different cities that might be an option. Different pockets too, because a lot of times you yeah. only hear about the bigger cities, the more popular areas, but coming down, you'll notice that there are a little more little towns in between. And then the solution, if you're already here, and you're like, oh my gosh, did I make the wrong move? Well, number one, kind of the thing we just talked about, maybe look at other cities, other options, because maybe a different one's a better fit for you. But on top of that, one thing is just, as we were in Orlando, I'd say at, at that about that year and a half mark, we kind of did settle in and get used to a lot of the changes and it wasn't such a big deal as it was at first because you figure out solutions to little problems or you just get used to things being different so just sometimes waiting it out like just stay in that spot for a year and a half to two years and maybe you will adjust to the area and at first that shell shock you know that you have will wear off Yes, because Florida is very different, <laughs> especially us being from the Midwest, it is very, very different from the Midwest. But if you're here for a year, year and a half or two, you'll you know start either adapting or you'll be like, okay, no, this is not for me. Either find a new area or yes, maybe you will have to move back home. If you wanna know more about moving to Florida and what it's like here, check out this playlist right here. If you're looking to move to Florida, make sure to call, text, or email me. I am a local realtor in the Venice, Sarasota area, but I can definitely recommend you our realtor in another area my information will be in the description box below hit the like button subscribe turn on all notifications and live, live breezy, breezy.